Oh, this is Bobby. We're at Cocktail Beauty Pier. Uh, today we the video showing how do we bench test uh, BPS 168JP. This is a board that we're going to be sending back to a customer. And this video is for the customer, but can also be used by other people. We have similar videos on how to test boards. Uh, this is the customer's original board that was sent to us. If I have the time in this video, I will also make a video of how we test it. It tests the, the same way in which this one tests, except it makes one buzzing sound in the beginning when it turns on, like uh, like it gets overloaded for a bare second, like uh, in the initial uh, process when it starts up, well, the, the current is uh, too high and it's not uh, jumping slowly raising slowly as it should be it may be a purely and probably is a pure mechanical issue but um, more about that in a second now like every <coughs> or like most other led boards uh, this one goes starting up in several phases and this is how one can test it outside of a tv and the original board did not have uh, what is the first and most important thing of power supply boards for any kind of TV, it is what it's called a standby voltage. Now, this board has two connectors where it outputs uh, voltages needed by the TV, this one and that one. And the one up there in the right that is for the LEDs, and this is the hardest one to test, and I'm not gonna include it right now. I'm not, I'm not gonna show how to test it because in order, to test that, one needs to load all four, and there are four um, rails here, four positives, four negatives. The negatives are common, but the positives are separate. It has four separate circuits of LEDs, and if any one of them fails, the whole, this whole output is being automatically turned off. Uh, and that's why it is hard to test that one on a bench. It's much easier if one has a, a live TV or anything else. Luckily, in all LED power supply boards that I have seen across the board, all, all brands, all manufacturers, the LED driver is one of the last things to fail. The LEDs themselves fail way before the LED driver itself. What fails many times is in the, the other circuit here. And this has several components. The first one of them is the standby voltage. And what voltages are going out of this connector can be found in this table. And uh, we can see that there is output for panel 12 volts. Somewhere here there's going to be panel power signal. And this is a driving pin, driving controlling connector, which when logical one gets passed here, which is anything above 2.5, five volts, the exact value I am not sure of, it may be above two, it may be, but it's got to be high enough, somewhere between um, about 50% of what the normal standby voltage is, or above, then it will activate those 12 volts on pins one and two, and the pin number numbers are shown here, they're printed on the board, on the top side are the odd numbers on the inside that you cannot access from here and the inside can be accessed only from here or from the back of the board are the odd numbers and so uh, the first thing that we care for is the standby voltage which is i think is bu5 volts on the 15th and on the 14th is power supply on so somewhere here on the 15th when the board is connected and I'm looking at, okay, so this is pin number 15. Let me count from the beginning, 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5, 6, 1, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. So just like this table says here, on the 15th pin there is BU, 5 volts, this is the standby voltage. This is the voltage needed for the TV to operate at the bare minimum. Waiting for your input to power it on, better whether by a button or by uh, remote control. Very little power is needed for that. This small transformer here 
is what takes care of the standby power and it, it doesn't do almost anything else what else exactly does it do it does not really matter while the tv is in standby the voltage over those two capacitors up here is 168 165 and 70 uh, volts i was about to say dollars those two you have to measure together and you have to make sure that you don't short uh, because it will be pretty powerful spark there now uh, what you need to do to process proceed testing further is to tell the power supply that you want it to wake up this is what will happen when you press the button on your tv uh, the main board will start wakening up and it will get back to this power supply and send those 5 volts or 2.8 anywhere between 2.5 up to 5 it will send back to uh, pin 14 which is power supply on and basically what happens here is you take the output uh, from pin 15 and you short it to pin 14 and one way to do that is with a regular wire one way to do that is with tweezers uh, but if you are going to be testing and doing it multiple times the really reliable way is to just hack a simple connector that takes care of that when you do it on the other board that i showed before it does make that buzzing sound for a second this one did not several things will happen though the very first one of them that needs to be verified and that may have been something that the other board wasn't doing because i saw that we've replaced the pfc driver the voltage on those two capacitors here will raise to about 400 you know, 405 and that means that the power factor correction circuit is um, working fine if you want to go and dig up what that means power factor correction and uh, the board probably in addition to this guy now it activated stuff that is here you, you know the stuff that is under those heat sinks it probably also activated this transformer sorry well no this one would be the right one and the net result of that would be that now on this connector you will also be having the 13 volts that are being advertised here pins five six seven eight unregulated 13 point something volts so it said five six seven okay one three five so on five we have 13 point two just as advertised and it also advertises panel 12 volts on pin one and pin two there's nothing there the reason there is nothing there is because pin one very much like other things needs to be activated this is that pin that says panel power number 16 here and what needs to happen is that pin number 16 needs to receive again logical one which is anywhere between two point something and five volts and what we have here is this little button that when pressed will cause exactly uh will make exactly that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold that to pin one and press the button and there you go you have 12 volts on pin one this is the control that the main board exercises and i'm doing it manually here and so far that board is testing fine the two things that we did not test are number one we did not test any of the led outputs and this is a little bit more difficult for those particular boards it's not it's not too difficult uh it can be tested outside but one needs to have the proper load for all four channels uh, or the easiest way is just to have a live tv and then by controlling those pins again uh, one can just make the lights go on uh, that's the one thing that we're not doing in this video the second thing that we're not doing in this video is a power supply board is properly tested when all those things that we just did are done when the board is actually loaded you don't have just a simple connector here uh, you have something that actually 
uh, takes juice out of the pork, in other words, takes current, and uh, you can verify that the power supply is holding the voltage that it's supposed to hold when you start pulling current out of it. Uh, we don't do that in those test videos, and I've explained in other, in other videos why. Uh, two things. Number one, this is really rare for a power supply board to fail under load and pass uh, under bench test. It's, it's, it's not impossible, it definitely is possible, but I would say about 1% of the time that happens. And we test under load when we have good reasons, uh, namely customer coming back and saying, hey, you know what, that board works fine, uh, but when I load it, you know, when I turn it on, I lose standby, it starts misbehaving, starts clicking, then doing other things. Then we do that, if we can. Uh, usually it's possible. In case of those, again, it's harder. Uh, well, that's it. Uh, in other cases like this one, it is simply easier for us to send back a replacement board. So this is the board that we're sending back. And again, that is the original. It does exactly the same thing as this one, except when it's first activated, when we plug that connector in, it makes a buzzing sound. And that may be a result of many, many things. It may be an electrical issue somewhere, like what we've repaired may not be sufficient. We may be missing something. Or it may be just a loose uh, leg somewhere on a power transformer, on a capacitor. Uh, some of the heat sinks maybe. It can be many different things. For the time being, we'll just send that board and uh, see what will happen on the customer end. The odds of two or let alone three boards being defective in the same way is, I would say, practically zero. It's not impossible, but we'll see what happens. Good luck.